Apple Pay has revolutionized the way we shop. Imagine effortlessly tapping your device at the checkout counter, instantly completing your transactions without the hassle of fumbling for cash or swiping cards. Whether grabbing your morning coffee, shopping for groceries, or treating yourself to a new gadget, Apple Pay has simplified the process and saved you valuable time. In the video, we're going to look deeper into the marvel and how it runs like a bank within itself. Apple, known for its innovative technology, has been increasingly involved in bank-like activities. But is it too far to label Apple as a bank? Just last month, Apple made another move in the financial service arena. They partnered with investment bank Goldman Sachs to launch a high-interest savings account, offering an impressive annual rate of 4.15%. This account surpasses the average U.S. savings rate by more than 10 times and even outperforms offerings from competitors, including Goldman Sachs offerings. However, this is not Apple's first venture into the financial services. In 2014, they introduced Apple Pay, a mobile payment service that enables users to make contactless NFC payments with your iPhones. Taking it up a notch, Apple launched Apple Card in 2019, a credit card created by Apple and powered by the iPhone with no annual fees. While Apple's expansion into financial services is notable, some may argue that calling Apple a bank is a step too far. Nonetheless, their efforts to provide banking-like services demonstrate their commitment to enhancing the financial experiences of their customers. It may seem like Apple is already acting like a bank, especially with the Apple Card. But here's the catch. The card is issued by Goldman Sachs. The partnership between Apple and Goldman Sachs is so tightly integrated that you need an Apple Card to access the Apple Savings account we mentioned earlier. While this arrangement may give the impression of a bank-like setup, it's important to note that both the savings account and credit card are offered in partnership with Goldman Sachs. As a result, the risk associated with these services falls primarily on Goldman Sachs as they handle the deal's financial aspects. So, while Apple is making strides in financial services, it's not yet encroaching on the banking sector. What sets Apple apart from the others is its significant cash reserves. Even though Apple has an astronomical valuation exceeding $2.7 trillion, its distinction lies in its cash holdings. As we all know, Apple is cash rich. While other tech giants have impressive valuation, Apple stands out with substantial cash on hand. Now let's talk about Apple's buy now, pay later scheme, known as Apple Pay Later. Such schemes are not new, even for Apple. In the UK, for example, Apple has been offering financing plans for their products in partnership with the high street bank Barclays. However, Apple Pay Later scheme differs because it's managed in-house. Instead of relying on a major bank like Barclays, Apple is directly involving in the lending process. They provide the funds themselves, leveraging their significant cash reserves. The cash abundance gives Apple the capability to take on lending activities independently. Their vast financial resource empowers them to offer financing options and assume the role traditionally held by major banks. With a robust cash position, Apple is well positioned to expand its financial services in-house and potentially disrupt the traditional banking landscape. What truly sets Apple apart is its remarkable bank balance. Despite the challenging times experienced by the tech industry, Apple has maintained a substantial amount of cash. According to its latest filings with the Securities and Exchange Commissions SEC, Apple holds around $16.55 billion in cash, cash equivalents and securities, with $17 billion in pure cash. While this figure has decreased from the impressive $237 billion they held in 2018, it is still an enormous amount for any company to possess readily available. Apple's significant cash reserves enable them to undertake ambition initiatives such as moving for financial services in-house through their bankrupt projects. Moreover, it's worth noting that Apple services divisions generated more profit than industry giants like J.P. Morgan Chase and Citigroup combined. This impressive financial performance showcases Apple's ability to capitalize on their service offerings and reinforce its position as a key player in the market. With substantial cash reserves and a focus on expanding its financial services, Apple stands out not only for its technological innovation, but also for its financial strength and potential influence in the banking sector. All these factors converge to create a compelling argument that Apple poses a potential threat to the big banks. In fact, according to some industry experts, Apple is already being considered a bank. Jamie Dimon, chairman and chief executive of J.P. Morgan Chase, acknowledged that while Apple may not have insured deposits, it exhibits the characteristics of a bank by moving, holding, managing, and lending money. This viewpoint is not limited to a single individual or bank. The CEO of American Express, one of the world's most valuable companies, expressed concern about Apple and Amazon encroaching on the banking space. Apple and Amazon have extensive connections with consumers, and their intrusion into the financial sector has raised alarms among banking elites. The industry knows the potential disruption these tech giants could bring to the traditional banking landscape. 
Apple appears to be strategically positioned in the banking world. As reported by three former Apple employees speaking to the Financial Times, they suggest that Apple has been playing the long game, gradually expanding its presence in the industry. Apple's efforts extend beyond enabling users to make payments through Apple Pay. They have quietly launched a feature in the United States that also allows individuals to receive payments. This development is made possible through the Tap to Pay functionality on iPhones, which enables businesses of all sizes to seamlessly and securely accept Apple Pay, contactless credit and debit cards, and other digital wallets with a simple tap to their iPhones. By providing a comprehensive payment ecosystem, Apple aims to organically increase its influence in the banking world gradually taking a bigger bite out of the industry. What's intriguing about Apple's approach is that for now, no additional hardware or payment terminals are required. They're making strides alongside the financial giants in this space. However, their system relies primarily on other banks issuing cards to consumers, with transactions routed through networks like Visa and MasterCard. But Apple seems to be moving in a direction that could bypass these intermediaries and create a closed payment circuit. Instead of adding a Visa debit card from a bank like HSBC to your Apple wallet and using its transactions processed by Visa, Apple might envision a scenario where all the money remains within an Apple Cash account. Transactions could then be conducted solely using Apple's system, transferring funds between Apple Cash accounts. This fundamental shift is at the heart of the matter and could disrupt the traditional payment ecosystem as we know it. Whether Apple actively aims to become a bank remains open for debate. However, what is clear from the recent history is their consistent effort to strengthen and tightly integrate their ecosystem. You're likely familiar with the approach if you own an Apple device. Apple encourages users to purchase more products or services to enjoy the Apple experience. They create a dependency on their ecosystem, whether through requirements like an iCloud subscription, other aspects such as iMessage further contributes to the ecosystem lock-in. Additionally, companion products like AirPods and the Apple Watch are designed to fully leverage their capabilities when paired with an iPhone. This strategy of enhancing and solidifying its ecosystem has been a central theme for Apple, and it shapes its relationship with customers. It remains to be seen how this approach may evolve and potentially impact the financial service sector. Apple's strategy is often called the walled garden approach, wherein it becomes increasingly difficult to leave once you enter their ecosystem. However, this approach presents a significant challenge regarding Apple's potential banking aspirations. Competition, particularly regulations, is a major concern for big tech companies like Apple. Currently, competition regulators in the US, UK, and EU are closely scrutinizing the practices of these companies. Issues range from proprietary charging cables, such as the Lightning Connector, to the high fees charged on purchases made through app stores. These regulatory challenges complicate Apple's path towards expanding into the banking sector. We are all well aware of the immense influence that companies like Apple, Alphabet, Google, and Meta, Facebook already have on various aspects of our lives. Now imagine the impact if, or more likely when, they make a significant entry into the financial sector. Regulatory bodies are already closely monitoring the foray of big tech companies into finance. In October, the UK's Financial Conduct Authority initiated an inquiry into whether Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, and Meta's growing interest in retail financial services could result in exploiting their ecosystems and locking consumers in. The European Commission has also launched a probe into Apple's dominant position in the mobile wallet market specifically Apple Pay. If Apple were to make a bold move into the banking sector, it would attract the attention not only of competition regulators, but also financial regulators. Such a move carries significant risk, especially in the current volatile climate for the technology and banking industries. It remains unclear whether Apple is willing to take such a substantial risk. The ongoing debate and arguments surrounding this dynamic highlight the complex intersections of technology and finance. Indeed, the regulatory scrutiny faced by big tech companies entering the financial sector highlights the challenges of our current times. It reflects the intricate and complex nature of the political and economic landscape. The interest of regulators aiming to ensure fair competition and protect consumers sometimes clash with the ambitions and strategies of these tech giants. This ongoing tension demonstrates how the intersection of technology, finance, and regulation can often result in conflicting perspectives and debates. In conclusion, Apple's expansion into financial services has sparked debates about its potential to disrupt traditional banking. While Apple has ventured into various financial offerings such as Apple Pay, Apple Card, and a high-interest savings account, it remains a subject of contention whether Apple aims to become a full-fledged bank. The company's cash reserves and efforts to strengthen its ecosystem indicate a potential desire to play a more significant role in the financial sphere. However, Apple's ambitions face scrutiny from competition, regulators who scrutinize the potential for market dominance and consumer lock-in. The regulatory landscape is complex and challenging as technology and banking industries navigate evolving political and economic dynamics.
Ultimately, the intersection of technology and finance presents opportunities and challenges for consumers and regulators. The influence and reach of big tech companies like Apple have become significant factors in shaping the financial landscape. As the debate continues, regulators need to strike a balance between fostering innovation and ensuring fair competition to protect the interests of consumers. The future of Apple's role in banking remains uncertain, but its foray into financial services serves as a testament to the ongoing evolution of the industry and the potential transformation of how we manage our finances. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.